Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a love reading today. This can be on any kind of a love connection, soulmate, twin flame, karmic, however you identify with somebody. Maybe you don't even know what kind of a connection that you're having, so that's why I don't want to exclude anyone from watching or being able to resonate with this reading. And as usual, take what resonates, get rid of the rest. If um, you see this reading and it's just not resonating with you right off the bat, it's probably not a reading for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow an outline that I have seen here on Pinterest. It's been created by somebody um, with the name on Tumblr named Arcane uh, Mysteries, I believe is what they're called. And it's a Halloween spread. And I just thought, you know what, we're two weeks away from Halloween. I'm breaking out a lot of my decks here that are Halloween themed or just kind of darker. Doesn't mean it will be a darker reading, but these are just, you know, more Halloween themed cards. And I just thought it would be fun to use them at this particular time. So this is going to be in the perspective of the other person. This is really focusing on what they're thinking, what they're going through, what's holding them back when it comes to you and this connection. So um, I will put a timestamp in the description box below if you guys do not want to um, watch any of the shuffling at all. So you guys can go straight to it. But I'm going to introduce each deck as I'm shuffling. This is the Tarot of the Vampires. I've already pre-shuffled everything, but I'm going to give everything a quick shuffle anyways. This one is called the Tarot de la Newt. If I'm saying that right, I'm not sure if I am. This one is called the uh, Zombie Tarot. And the reason I'm shuffling it like this is because the cardstock on this is so thick. It's literally, wow, <laughs> cards are just flying out everywhere. But these are such difficult cards. I'm not taking it as spirit trying to give me some sort of message already. You see how difficult that is? It's just, it's just so hard. So They're super slippery too. This one is called the Santa Murta Tarot. This deck I've actually, I think, only used one other time, so I'm not real familiar with it. I have cats scratching at the door. This right here is my newest Oracle deck. I got it off of Amazon. It's called Moonology Oracle Cards. And I have um, all kinds of moon phases and astrological influences. I'm not an expert in that field at all. So some of you may be able to get some extra messages if you know a lot about astrology and moon phases. This one is called The Wisdom of the House Night Oracle Cards by PC Cast and Colette Baron Reed. This one is called Divination of the Ancients. And one of my favorite Oracle decks for Halloween. It's called The Halloween Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. All right, let's get started. Okay, very first thing. So this particular spread, the very first thing is called Sinister Steps. So it says, what risks is this person afraid to take towards you in this connection right now? Let's go ahead and see. Very first card that comes through. Interesting, we have death. They're afraid of transformation. They're afraid of taking things in a new direction. So you may be in contact with this person. Some of you may be in separation with them. Some of you may be in very little contact with them. Whatever your situation is, it doesn't really matter. But they are afraid to take a risk to transform the situation and turn it into something new. Very significant for the very first message coming through for this reading. What else? Look at this, you guys, four of cups. So this is the deal. This person right now may be giving you the cold shoulder or they might just be a little kind of distant and not seem super interested. So you're getting this vibe from them that they're not interested. But the thing is, is that they're afraid to take things to the next level with you for some reason. Let's get more information. Eight of wands. So Eight of Wands is a card of fast movement forward, moving forward at a high, fast rate. The Eight of Wands is also a card of communication, and the Eight of Wands is also a sexual energy card, passion, moving forward, very exciting, 
The desire may be there for them, but they are afraid to take this risk. They're, and what I'm getting here is that they're also afraid that if they just open up Pandora's box right now with you, or they were to make that decision to do that, that all hell is gonna break loose and they're just not ready for what may follow after that. They might not feel like they're ready at this point in their lives, or they're just not ready for the intensity of this kind of connection. It's kind of like they know if they go down that road with you, that they better be they better be freaking ready. And some of them are just not ready. Some of them are holding back. Some of them are just kind of declining right now, or they're just acting uninterested at this particular time. I'm just seeing here that that's a better play for them at this point, rather than taking a risk and going towards you. What else? Look, see, the lovers. This is about making a choice based on our heart space, based on our feelings. For some of you out there, this is not going to resonate with everybody, but some of you may be dealing with somebody that has a lover right now, as in they are in another relationship. They're either in another commitment or they're in a marriage, and this is something that maybe they would like to transform and change, but they're having a very difficult time. They may not want to take a risk and step away from that connection because they don't want to create drama. They don't want to create stress. They don't want to create any kind of hardship. So that might be for some of you out there watching this video as to why this person is just choosing to kind of not do anything at this point. Just kind of let things be the way that they are rather than taking the risk and moving things forward. But for some of you, if there is no third party situation whatsoever, the, the risk that they're afraid to take is actually to transform things and to come together with you and put effort into a loving relationship. So they're afraid of this for some reason. They're afraid of it. Let's get some Oracle cards on it. See, we have new moon in Pisces. So meditate and contemplate. Some of you, this could be specific message for you if you're dealing with the Pisces or your Pisces. As a you know, matter of fact, we do have other signs here just so you guys know. I'll let you know. I see Gemini and I also see Scorpio here. So, um, you know, there are some signs here if you guys want to resonate with that, but it doesn't mean if you didn't hear your sign that this doesn't mean that this reading can be for you. But this is Pisces specific, meditate and contemplate. So this person is deciding to just kind of meditate and contemplate. You're not dealing with somebody who is willing to take a risk in this moment. Yes, this can change, okay? This can change. But right now, you're dealing with somebody who's not willing at this point to make any major, major moves. There is a desire though. I am getting here that there is a desire that they do have or hold for you, but they're choosing to stay kind of calm because the four of cups is that energy of just kind of keeping to themselves. And this death card is also a card where, you know, things are over, things are not really moving forward. We have the ability to transform from the death, transform from what has ended, but this person is really just choosing to meditate and contemplate instead. Understanding, choosing to figure out something, to understand more, figure out what they want. This person is very much contemplating what it is that they truly want and desire with you, with this connection, with what they want to do in their lives, very much in a very uh, deep introspective mode is what I'm getting for them. Yeah, see clouds. Now when I get clouds, even though this says mystical, clouds to me are thoughts. Clouds to me are also like in the Lenormand deck, there could be some troubled thoughts, some things that seem to be kind of cloudy. But this card, the key says mystical, beautiful. So mystical, thinking about things, the clouds, heads being, our head being in the clouds, maybe thinking in terms of how things could possibly be. So they're trying to figure out what they want. They're trying to contemplate and understand something and figure something out. This person is very much in their head about this situation when it comes to you. They're definitely thinking about it is what I'm getting, but they're not willing to take a risk quite yet. 
last message on this, we have skull. Now, whenever I see a skull in this deck, I know that this person is in their headspace. This says creating through the ashes. So this person may have gone through some difficult hardships. They're going through something right now, or there has been something that has happened between the two of you where they created a shit storm, and now they're trying to come through the ashes of their actions perhaps for some of them out there. There just could be a lot of things that are going on for them in general, and they're trying to come through those ashes. They're trying to survive. So you have somebody who's coming through the ashes, trying to come into happier times, really thinking in terms of what they want, trying to understand, trying to figure out how to create the things that they want, perhaps. But the, the main focus was for this particular um, number one, what risks are they afraid to take? They are afraid to take a risk towards this connection right now. So they still need some time to understand something. They still need more time to think about what it is that they truly desire and what they wanna create through some of these, through some of the hardship that they either, either already created for you or whatever it is that they need to end in their life in order to come through those ashes and to create through the ashes. Because we have death here, and then we have creating through the ashes of the ending, the death. How, to, how do I transform this energy? How do I transform and come into more of an energy of what I want with you in this connection? So I think that that's a telltale sign that you're dealing with somebody who's very much in their headspace, very much trying to figure out what they want and kind of have not sure if they want to take that risk or can take that risk at this particular time. So number two is the witch's cackle. What does their inner voice want you to know? So I'm just going to take this as what does this person want you to know? What do they truly want you to know? Their inner voice, the things that they're not saying to you. What are they saying to you without saying it to you? If they could say something, if they could find their words, what would they say? Well, we have the Prince of Grails. And just give me a second here, because this particular deck, I believe the Prince is the, uh, yeah, it's the King. I had to be certain. King of Cups, beautiful. So again, we could be dealing with a, a water sign individual because we already had Scorpio and we had Pisces that came through. Uh, the other water sign would be Cancer. So that could be specific for some of you out there watching this video. But what their inner voice does want to tell you is that they care. They do care for you. They do have feelings for you. And, um, but again, there's obviously some things that are holding them back from choosing this connection with you for some reason. We have the Eight of Swords. Exactly. Something is keeping them stuck. Their own thoughts, perhaps. Their own circumstances. Eight of Swords is one of those cards of bondage, but it's self-inflicted bondage. We can get out of that at any time that we choose. We just simply have to cut ties with certain things. We have to walk away from certain situations, or we have to just stop, you know, being so much in our head space. So this is not out of this person's control. This is just their own thought process that's keeping them and holding them at bay. Five of Swords. This is the deal, though. So I really, truly believe that this person feels that they have outside circumstances because you can see all these other hands that are coming out of the situation and this person is kind of arguing with somebody or trying to fight or battle for that, you know, gun or just whatever in a, in a situation trying to win this battle. They do feel like they're conflicted because of their environment. So this person does feel like their outer circumstances are causing them stress or causing them to feel like they can't come towards you at this particular time. So there's some sort of a battle that's causing them to feel like they can't move towards you at this particular time. So their inner voice or their higher self is trying to tell you that there's things going on with me right now. I do care, but there's something that's holding me back. I feel constrained. I feel stuck. I feel like I'm in a state of bondage. That's just how I'm feeling is what I'm getting. Yep. Three of swords, you guys. We have some difficult cards here for sure. 
Five of Swords and Three of Swords, a very difficult energy, very heavy energy. Three of Swords is a card of heartbreak. For some of you out there, this could be third party situation, not going to be for everybody. But some of you are dealing with somebody that is still in another relationship or they have broken your heart or have cheated on you or lied to you or hurt you in some sort of fashion in the past. And so this is a current struggle for them. And so they are telling you, even though, yes, I have these issues, even though I've got all this crap going on, or I've done all of this to you, I do care for you. So that is very important for this person to want you to know this with that page of cups. And they know that it's time to release negativity. I think it's really interesting because we are going into Scorpio season, I believe, either this week or next week because Scorpio is at the very end of October going into November. So full moon, you know, whenever that full moon is in Scorpio, it's time to release negativity. So this is very significant as in current time. This person is letting you know that they are working on releasing some sort of negative cycle or maybe even working on releasing some sort Sort of negative energy that's been affecting them in their environment. They want to release this. This could be even a profession of an apology, really, really saying that they're sorry for the way that they treated you or what they did. If, if they have in fact done something, we have oath. Some of you are dealing with somebody that has taken an oath with another person. They feel, they feel like they have, they owe it to this other person to, to, they feel obligated, they feel like they have to stick by that person's side or they have to finish out a situation because that's the oath that they took. That's for some people out there. For others, if it's not about another person, this is about the oath that they took with you. Somebody somebody um, did not act with integrity. Somebody did not stand by their word. Somebody said something or and did something different. So there is this sadness and heartbreak and this manipulation and this feeling of feeling stuck because of somebody's actions. Somebody does want to release this negative cycle. They, they, they want to either apologize or they want to change or they want to put their best foot forward. So they want you to know this. They want you to know that they want to be stand up, that they want to be truthful. So if you're dealing with somebody who is kind of holding you at bay right now. They're just kind of giving you the cold shoulder or they're staying away at this particular time. Do know that this person does have feelings for you with that lover's card, the eight of wands and the prince of cups, the king of cups. But the deal is, is that they're kind of withdrawn at this particular time. They need time for understanding. They need time to kind of get through some of this negative energy that either they created or something that is around them that is causing them to feel like they're stuck and they can't move forward. So take what resonates. Ouija board caution, you guys. So what they're letting you know here, they're cautioning you. It's like what I just got was this. I'm not ready. If I if we come together right now, I might hurt you again. I don't want to hurt you again. I want to make sure that I'm ready. I want to make sure that I don't have either this third party situation going on anymore or that I'm fully ready and available for this connection. And the thing is, I just don't feel like I'm ready just yet. I still need time to meditate and contemplate. I still need some understanding. I still need to either get my head out of fantasy or the clouds. I still need to create through these ashes, come through the ashes, come through the destruction that either I created or that's about ready to go down in my life. But there's something that they're cautioning you. They're cautioning you on dealing with them. You might be dealing with somebody that knows that they can't make a full commitment to you or that they can't be fully honest with you. So it's kind of like they're reserved towards you. You almost got to take that as like a blessing in disguise is what I'm getting here. Very interesting. Last card. Joy. Rejoicing in the present. So it does say present. So what this person also wants you to know is that they just want you to rejoice in your own joy at this particular time, okay? So if waiting on them, 
or dealing with them is making you sad and it's causing you to feel stress, that's actually not making them happy because they do care, okay? Even though their actions, even though their words, even though how they're acting towards you at this particular time or how they've acted towards you, may not, you may not feel that, you may not feel like that's being reflected, but I'm getting here that they really do want to put their best foot forward, moving forward. And so if they're not doing that at this particular time, it's almost like you got to take that as a blessing in disguise because you are being cautioned. So this person really wants you to know from their higher self to just really rejoice in the present moment with what you have going on right now, rather than trying to worry so much about the future because the future is unknown at this point. They're not ready to take a risk just yet. And they really are still trying to figure things through. They're trying to release some sort of negativity or some sort of negative cycle or behavior. And they want to, you know, be ready for this connection if you guys decide to reestablish this connection moving forward. Number three, what is weighing this person down? Creaky chains. What is weighing them down? Seven of skulls. The Seven of Skulls is the Seven of Pentacles, and the Seven of Pentacles is a card of patience, but it's also a card of needing to come up with a new plan, a better plan of action, long-term investment. So this is kind of like that energy of pause, kind of rethinking and reassessing what you want to do in the future. So what's weighing them down right now is that some of them may feel very lost. What they've been working towards, it's kind of like everything seems to be falling apart right now. Has what I've invested in, is that something that is going to pay off or did I make the wrong investment? So some of them are maybe wanting to change things right now. They might be going through some sort of just a midlife or just a, a point in their lives where they're just like, what I've been doing all along, I just don't want to go down that road anymore. They may want to change their lives completely. And so they're kind of going through this inner turmoil. Look at this, Knight of Swords. What action do I want to take? What direction do I want to go in? That's what I'm really getting for them. This is really weighing them down. They don't know what they want to do moving forward. So this is the thing. If they don't know what they want to do moving forward, why, they, why would they want to involve you in that? If they're unsure about what they're doing and what they're thinking and how they're feeling, they don't want to involve you on that crazy train with them right now. So again, I keep getting it over and over again from spirit. It's a blessing in disguise that this person is not trying to subject you you to their craziness right now. It's almost like they could only bring you pain right now. So really just let them try to figure it out. Four of wands. Yes, my foundation. What do I want to do? What do I want to build? What do I want in the long term? Do I want commitment? Do I want the marriage? Do I want the house? Do I want the family? Do I want the love? All that stuff. What do I want? in my world? What do I want to build towards? What do I want to do? Queen of Cups. Beautiful. So this is the thing. We have another energy here of, you know, a feminine energy, perhaps, if you are a feminine watching this and you're dealing with a masculine energy. So this is this, what is weighing them down? Well, the thing is, the Queen of Cups is somebody who's very emotional. She's very pure nurturing. She is um, somebody that you know that you can just really count on. Somebody who's going to be there for you. Somebody who's supportive. So this might also be weighing them down that they know that you're such a good, pure person that they just don't want to hurt again. So again, if they are not participating with you or wanting to take things forward with you at this time, it could be because they just really don't want to hurt you again or hurt you, period, because they do care for you. I did get the King of Cups in this reading and the Queen of Cups. So I have a partnership here. I have two people that do have a connection. And I had the lovers also come up in this reading, which really does tell me that there's definitely a deep soul connection between two people. So people do care for one another in this connection but people are just still trying to figure out what they want moving forward. 
So it's not a lack of love. It's just a lack of direction or just a lack of skills at this particular time, a lack of maturity and clarity. And we can already see that this person in the very beginning of the reading is trying to meditate and contemplate and figure out what it is that they are wanting to do. And I can see it again here. So this is what's weighing them down. Also too, maybe you have certain expectations and that might be weighing this person down because they know that they really should get their shit together. But for some reason, maybe they're just taking a long time and you're just like becoming impatient perhaps. And that might be weighing this person down too, that they know that you deserve better than what they can give to you. And so that might be also stressing them out too. Or maybe you're wanting something from them. You're wanting to talk about your emotions and they're not wanting to do that right now. They might be in that knight of swords energy, which is somebody who's just like trying to be logical and practical right now, not trying to be emotional. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's definitely that energy there. Emotions are running high. Look at this. What is weighing them down? Emotions. So this is the deal, you guys. It's going to be very specific because, see, the Queen of Cups is emotional. She is. She's very emotional. It doesn't mean it's a negative thing. You have every right to want to talk about your feelings with this person, okay? But emotions are running high right now. This is weighing them down. They don't want to talk about their emotions. They don't want to have an emotionally charged conversation with you. So if you're getting met with this energy right here of the Four of Cups, somebody's kind of you know, they're not really available. They're not really messaging you back. They're not really engaging with you or they're just kind of giving you the cold shoulder. Things are over. It seems, you, you know, you don't hear from them anymore, whatever the situation is. That's because emotions are running way too high. They don't want to deal with that right now. They don't want to deal with the conversation, talking about feelings and getting super deep right now. They just don't want that. Even though they do care for you, they're not trying to be emotional right now. They're actually trying to be more practical and logical. That's, that's just what I'm getting here. Deceit. Very interesting. So what's also weighing this person down is lies. Deception, lies. This person could be kind of... I don't want to say this person's full-blown lying to you, but it could be that their own lies, maybe the lies that they're telling someone else, maybe the lies that they've told you before are starting to catch up with them or have caught up with them. And now they're having to deal with the aftermath of all that. And again, you're dealing with somebody that's just like, it's weighing me down. My own lies, my own deceit, my own bullshit is starting to weigh me down. And I just don't want to deal with this right now. So if you're really getting somebody who's kind of closing the door on you or running away, way or not explaining themselves or ghosting you or just kind of shutting you out, this is the reason why, okay? Because this deceit and their emotions and your emotions and how you were affected and the heartbreak and the sadness and the games that they may have played or the back and forth crap or if they're in a third party situation, this is starting to weigh them down. Yeah, see, they need clarity. They absolutely need clarity. So what's weighing them down right now is that they're not clear. And we can already see with the prior cards that they are trying to gain some sort of perspective and clarity. And we have another, we have another skull coming through here. It says the underworld, where all things pause and begin again. The underworld. What's also weighing them down right now? is everything that's dark. All I'm getting here that you're dealing with somebody who's either getting a real big dose of karma right now, a lot of shit that ha they've done, a lot of people that they may have hurt, a lot of actions that they may have taken that were not always on the up and up are starting to bite them right now. And so they're in this underworld devil's energy of deception, deceit, emotions, you know, just kind of being lost at this particular time. So things that says where all things pause and where all things pause and then begin again. So what's weighing them down right now is just this energy of being in the underworld. Things are not clear. Things are not moving forward super fast. And I'm not saying that they're wanting to even go super fast, but they're also in this energy here where they're stuck. So they do want to move forward, but at the same time, they're stuck. So it's frustrating to them. It's weighing them down. They want transformation, yet they're afraid of it. It came through in the beginning of the reading. So they've got to go through something is what I'm getting. They have to go through some sort of karma, some sort of lesson, some sort of cycle here. And you just have to, 
you have to be able to step away to let that happen is what I'm getting. So now we're going to go into uh, slam doors. What path has run its course for this person? What path has run its course? <laughs> Judgment. The path has run its course of basically somebody doing the wrong thing, somebody acting without integrity, somebody doing things that are harmful to themselves and to other people. That right there, those days are over. Basically, karma and anything that you've done in your past, it's coming back to bite you now. I already got it with this person. So what has run its course is judgment day. Judgment day is here. Let's deal with it, let's handle it, and let's learn from it and move the fuck on. That's what I'm getting here. That is what's happening here. Queen of Wands. Beautiful. So what's run its course? You might be, they may have a Queen of Wands around them, okay? They may have also hurt the Queen of Wands damaged her ego, damaged her pride, her confidence, her energy, her fire, her charisma. Take it as it resonates here. But this is just definitely this energy of hurting somebody, making them feel bad about themselves, maybe even using people to boost their ego. That, those days are over. Those things have run its course. Ace of Cups, what's also run its course is that we need to be acting with our heart space. So if we have been acting without love, acting without caring, not offering with our hearts and just offering with our ego and being in a state of fear, going towards people in a state of need, those days are over. We have to, we have to be real. We have to be authentic now. And the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune and the Judgment to me, when I see them together, this is definitely karma. Definitely karma, for sure. The only thing that's missing here is justice. But the Wheel of Fortune and Judgment to me, karma, cycle, this cycle of this person basically doing things the way that they've always done things, it's over. This could be a specific person, though, Queen of Wands, that's connected to them, especially if they're in a third-party situation. It's time to end that cycle and let it go. A karmic partner is out. A karmic partner, that cycle has run its course. We need to let it go. We need to go into this energy of love. So if somebody is not, if somebody does not love somebody anymore and they're just staying with somebody out of need or dependency, it's time for them to choose with their heart space and go into the energy of love rather than need or dependency. So all of these things have run its course. Expect powerful change. New moon eclipse. Wow. So there could be something that shifted in one of the eclipses, but we have something about a new moon, new moon eclipse. Don't really know what that means. There's another card here that's stuck. Wow, believe in the impossible, blue moon. So again, like I had said in the beginning of this reading, um, when I was shuffling these cards, some of you may know a lot more about moon phases and astrology than I do. I don't know when the blue moon is. That could be specific for some sort of timing or even an eclipse or a new moon. But there's definitely something about powerful change and believe in the impossible. If you feel like this person can't change or that they're never going to be able to resolve a situation, that they're never going to be able to let something just kind of run its course, expect powerful change. Believe in the impossible. These two cards were stuck together. That Those go together for me. That's really beautiful. Strength. Believe that this person does have the strength in order to get you know, past something. F yeah, flowers, but the key word is fickle. Again, you're dealing with somebody who has been very wishy-washy, back and forth, all over the place, unreliable, f fickle. But expect the impossible. Expect a miracle. This person can conjure up the strength in order to change things that have run its course. 
and we have skull of light illumination they can see the light they can learn they can understand we already saw earlier that this person is trying to understand there they are trying to acquire some sort of knowledge and understanding and some sort of perspective and I'm seeing that they're actually due for it so believe in the impossible is what spirits telling you so a path has run its course this person can change they can change from things that no longer serve them they can let things go that no longer serve them that's what I'm getting ultimately so let's go ahead and take a look now and see um, what is haunting them from their past the magician things that they've done things that they've created things that they have manifested so things, actions that they have taken, good or bad, are coming back. They have manifested. They are showing up in their lives now. And that is what's haunting them right now. It's from their past, their past actions, what they've created, what they've manifested is all coming to them now. And we have the Ten of Cups. Ten of Cups to me is a card of family. So it could be that right now, what is haunting people right now is something to do with their family. There could be some sort of family issues. Uh, Ten of Cups can also be an indication of marriage. It could be that anything tied to marriage or children could be haunting somebody right now from their past. Um, and it could just be this indication here of family dynamics or family traditions even. Uh, it's, even though this isn't the Ten of Pentacles, but I'm still getting that feeling of tradition, marriage, commitment, the way that we view commitment and marriage haunting us from our past. Is this something that we can get past? Can we have a different relationship perhaps than our parents had if that's an issue for some people? You know, there's something about commitment and marriage here that's haunting somebody from their past. Will they be, will they be able to break that mold or break that pattern? another three of swords in this reading so two times the three of swords has been in this reading something that's haunting them from their past third party situation or some sort of action that they took that broke people's hearts including yours this is haunting them now this person is dealing with their karma you are dealing with somebody that's got major karma coming up for them right now major and the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords is a card of understanding, clarity, truth. So all those things actually came through illumination, clarity, truth, really just trying to, you know, th there, there is something to learn here, but it's a hard lesson because the Ace of Swords is definitely, it's a challenging beginning. So it doesn't, it's not like the Ace of Cups where it's just like, you know, it feels really good. It feels really flowing. No. This is more of like, well, here's a chance to understand something, but it's a double-edged sword. Like it might hurt a little. It might be a little painful. <laughs> so um, what's haunting this person right now from their past? What they've created in the past, they're now having to tend with now. And it could just be the way that they view commitment and marriage or just how they have handled their marriage in the past is now coming to bite them in the ass now. Sorry, these cards are stuck together, so there we go. The energy is gaining momentum. Waxing moon. Okay, so what's also hunting or haunting them from their past is the energy is, is kind of like it's get, it's ganging up on them. It's, it's coming. They can't stop it. There's nothing that they can do. It's just continuing. This could even be somebody where they've just got shit that is just piling on all kinds of things. They're just like one thing after another after another. <laughs> yep a shit storm I'm telling you oh my gosh I, I'm just it's funny I'm very like thinking of something specific for someone that I know but yeah I mean this really is about it, they're in this category here a lot of chaos a shit storm tornado it's just gain I mean what does a tornado do it gains momentum by the things that it gathers in its environment so something is gaining this chaos, this cycle, this energy that this person cannot escape. It's like they got to pay the piper and the piper's here and they got to pay it. They have to. So everything from this person's past is coming to them in full glory right now. And they got to deal with it.
and we have perception. So this is the deal. You might be dealing with somebody that's just like, oh my God, all this is happening to me. I don't understand it. And you're just like, really? You don't understand it? You don't understand that the shit storm that you created before is what you're dealing with now? So their perception right now is being challenged. Not everybody that gets karma understands that maybe they, that, that there's something to understand in the lesson, that there's something to understand kind of like, oh, okay, I can see that. I can see how maybe this is happening to me. I'm learning a lesson. Not everybody gets it right away and some people never get it. They never see the error of their ways. They never get it. And I'm not saying that for this person, but their perception right now with what's happening to them is definitely um, challenged. And this is not a surprise to me because that's why they're very much in this energy of, you know what? It'd be nice to come together with you. It'd be nice to possibly move forward in a good direction with you. But I, I need to understand something. I need to meditate and contemplate. I need to keep my distance right now. I need to just kind of decline this offer that you may be giving to me or that, you know, I need to close this door for now. I need to figure something out. Last card. Yeah, change, mummy. So this is the deal. What is haunting them from their past? change can they transform can they change from this can they change and do things different next time is this person really going to learn can they change i did see earlier before we pulled these cards i did see that this person can change it is possible expect the impossible expect a miracle and let's go ahead and take a look and see what they're going to do Okay, how are, they, how are they going to unlock all these issues? How are they going to get past everything? This is called the secret passage. How are they going to get past all these circumstances? Are they, going to, are they going to fight for it? Are they just going to give up? Are they going to be able to become a warrior? Or are they just going to be a coward? Let's see. Well, we do have the sun. I love it. The sun means energy. The sun is masculine. The sun is about taking action. The sun is about illumination confidence, charisma. That's good. And we have the emperor. I love it. The emperor is again, it's another masculine energy. This is somebody who takes control, takes charge, creates change, a king. And we have the queen of swords. Very interesting. So we have a king and a queen. We already had the queen of cups and we also had the king, uh, king of cups in this reading, but now we have a king and now we have a queen. Queen of swords. What I'm getting here especially if you know you're resonating with this message the more that you're in your logical space and you just kind of see things for how they are and you don't take things too personally you don't personalize it you don't take everything that this person's doing or not doing as a diss to you or like a knife in your heart when you're in that energy all you're doing is just making matters worse because you don't feel good in that energy you don't feel empowered in that energy you feel like a victim so the Queen of Swords is different. The Queen of Swords logically and practically is just looking at the situation. She's also independent. She's also focused on her. She is uh, very strong and independent. So that is what I'm seeing here as far as like the, the, the future energies of this person. When you're in this energy, it's easier for them to take control. It's easier for them to have control over their life. If you're the emotional mess and you're really pressing them to be emotional and, and pressing them for answers, it's like they're not as willing to take action towards this connection. They're just not. And we have nine, nine? Hold on for a second. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I just had to double check. So it's the, I, I don't use this deck very often. I think I've only used it one other time. I had to count the cups because I'm like, it looks like a six, but it might be a nine. It's a, it's a nine. Nine of cups, beautiful. Nine of cups is all about what we want, our desires. So moving forward in the future, it's like they're going after what they desire. What they really desire, though, is more of a queen of swords. Somebody who is being practical and logical and strong, not a puddle, not a mess. Somebody who is basically kind of holding them accountable in a way, but not being super emotional at the same time. Not being a hard ass, but not, it's, it's like 
it, and you're not expected to be perfect, you got to be yourself. You know, I'm not suggesting here that you need to be a certain person for them in order to feel better. I mean, some of you might be saying, fuck that, you know? Um, but yeah, there's just this energy though that they really desire you and really actually come towards you when you're not so focused on them, when you're not in an emotional mess towards them, when you're not dependent on them for your happiness. A personal issue reaches resolution full moon in Cancer. We've had Cancer, Scorpio, pretty much all the water signs come through very strong in this reading. Very strong. We've had, um, I believe, what did we have earlier here? We've had a lot of cards come through. I don't know why I'm just drawing a blank, but I just remember a lot of water in this reading for some, for some reason. Personal issue reaches resolution. So something very personal to this person, it reaches resolution. They resolve a matter. They resolve something. So there's definitely an indication in the future of this person taking control, going after what they want, their desires, and resolving an issue, a personal issue. Interesting. Individuality. Somebody who is being independent, somebody who is thinking about what they want, what they truly desire as in an individual. The Nine of Cups is also a card of self. It's, a, it's like, what do I desire as an individual? What's going to work for me? You might be dealing with somebody who has always put other people first. And for, um, you know, a time in their life moving forward, they're going to have to put their needs above everyone else's to figure out what do I truly want for my life? What's going to make me happy? Breaking away from the norm, breaking away from what other people might want for them. And we have knowledge, the book of destiny. This is about a lesson. This is about acquiring knowledge, learning a lesson. So it's another indication that this person has learned some sort of lesson and it was destined for them. It was a part of their destiny in order to go through some sort of lessons and karma and have their ass handed to them when it comes to their past actions and the karma that's obviously coming up for them right now. But they're learning something from this. This is a, these are destiny events that are happening to this person right now. Yep. Look at this. And we have death two times in this reading, death transformation. The eternal cycle begins here. Now something can begin. Maybe before you've been trying to make something work with this person and it just wasn't working. And the reason why is because they had to go through some major transformation. Now this is obviously still happening for them, but this is the future energy. They can change. Doesn't mean they will, because they have free will to keep screwing up and not making the right decisions, which is why you should always choose yourself and never wait on anybody. But you can still have, you know, um, you can still send person good thoughts and, you know, wish for the best. But at the end of the day, you do have to rely on yourself. You can't rely on this person to change. You can't rely on them to do something so that way you can move forward with your life. You have to be able to do those things on your own. But the eternal cycle begins here. That's it. So this is about now a connection. Now something can happen with them because of all this stuff that is now happening. All of these lessons, all of these cycles, all of this pain that you guys have gone through. It's all been for a reason. It hasn't been for nothing. That's for damn sure. It, it, th there's a reason that this is happening. There's a reason that this person has gone through all of these things. They've had to, they had to learn this lesson too as an individual. For some of you, you may have really tried to point out to them what they were doing wrong. And that's not the way that it was going to, that's not the way that this person was going to learn. They were only going to learn it on their own. They were only going to see things on their own. They weren't going to be able to learn a certain lesson with you. They, it's almost like for some of them, they had to go maybe into another connection or have other experiences in order to learn a lesson. They couldn't learn the lesson with you. So you had to 
let them individually learn this lesson, okay? And the thing is, is as an individual, when you do that, somebody has to look at themselves. They're forced to look at themselves and how they've been, they've been running their life. They can't blame other people. They have no one to blame but themselves. And that's where the real learning begins, is when we can't blame other people for our problems and our issues anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to end this reading with a final message from Spirit. What is the most important thing that Spirit wants you to know right now? with this person and this connection moving forward in the future? What's the most important thing that they want you to know? Three of Wands. The Three of Wands is a card of, you know, investments, something paying off. This is a card where we're waiting for our ships to come in. So waiting for something to pay off, waiting for something to return. But this is the thing, what they're telling you immediately. Because I'm like, is Spirit really telling you to wait around for this person? I don't think that that's what Spirit would say. And the reason why is because you never want to wait around for anybody. I mean, you can still keep them in your heart and have hope and that sort of thing, but you never want to put your dreams, your hopes, and your desires on hold on account of somebody else. You have to keep moving forward for yourself. So what Spirit is saying here when it comes to waiting, you may want to wait for that person. Don't. Three of swords. You're only going to hurt yourself because this is the deal. They may or may not be able to change, even though it came through this reading that there's a possibility that they could change, okay? Doesn't mean they will. They have the free will, like I said, to keep fucking up. So make sure that you aren't you're sitting around waiting in vain. You're that queen of swords. You're being logical and practical. You're not that queen of cups who's just an emotional puddle waiting around for them to figure it out. I can't move on. I can't love anybody else. That kind of, that kind of energy, it's no good. All it's going to do is it's going to keep you heartbroken. Three of swords came up three times in this reading today. Three times. That means that there's some true heavy energy in the heart space. Some things that need to be healed. Some wounds that need to be healed some possible third party situation that needs to get cleared up. There's definitely something going on here. There's also that possibility that somebody could break your heart again. So again, this is not about putting all of your eggs into this person's basket. You want to make sure that you have some stuff on your reserve for yourself and that you're not just spending your time waiting around for them. Look, the devil. I love that it's an old cigarette machine. <laughs> Um, the devil. We also have the underworld already in this reading. There's definitely low vibrational energy. They're letting you know that this person is in a negative cycle right now. They got a lot of karma that they're dealing with. And it's not about abandoning somebody in a time where they're going through a crisis. But you do have to let this person handle their shit. You do have to let this person sit and marinate in it too, because that's the only way that they're going to learn. You can't pick up the pieces for them. You can't make it all better for them. You can't save them, especially if you're wanting them to learn the lesson and learn some sort of integrity moving forward. You have to let them sit in it and figure it out. So you can feel badly for them. Nobody wants to see somebody in pain. Nobody wants to see somebody crumble. Sometimes that is enjoyable, though, because it's kind of like, you know, especially if somebody has hurt us, it is somewhat enjoyable. I shouldn't say enjoyable, satisfactory, knowing that somebody is kind of getting their ass, or their ass handed to them and they're learning a lesson. So for some of you, it may not be all bad, but for some of you, you may just feel inclined to just want to nurture this person like the Queen of Cups and love them and be there for them and help them and all this other stuff. And I'm not saying you can't be there for this person in that way. But you're really being instructed to be more of the queen of swords in this situation and really keep a safe, healthy distance, okay? Because maybe in the past you really just gave everything up for them and you were always about, it was all about them. If you want this cycle to change with this person, you can't go in back into those same old behaviors. Three, wow, three of wands, two times, two different decks. So threes. A lot of threes coming through here. Look it up. Angel numbers. If you guys are seeing them, there could be a special message in all of this for you. But we do have the three of swords and the devil. So what Spirit's really wanting you to know is that something about waiting. You're waiting for something. If you're waiting on this person, they're in dark energy right now. So if you're feeling like you're being tied down, if you're feeling unhappy, 
If you're feeling sad, if you're feeling like you can't move on with your life, that is because you're getting sucked into this person's energy. They're actually negatively affecting you. And when I say they, you're negatively affecting your situation because of your attachment to them, because of your involvement with them if you are involved with them some of you may not be talking to this person but maybe you're still checking up on them on social media or you're still keeping tags up tabs on them or they're all you think about so that is an attachment right there so what spirit is saying and that's why we have that cigarette machine addiction we're addicted here we're addicted to this situation we're addicted to the pain the three of swords we're addicted to some third party crap that's not serving us for some of you we got to, instead of waiting around for this to change, we've got to take action. We got to pull away. We got to, we got to save ourselves. So that, this is a real heavy duty message for some of you out there. Take time to breathe out. We need to breathe it out. We need to exhale this toxicity. We need to take time to just let something go. And I'm not saying forever or this is like, it will never happen, but we need some time to breathe. We need some time to just kind of disconnect and breathe on our own for a while, you know, rather than filling our lungs up with all that, you know, toxic crap. Yep, why? Because things are freaking complicated right now. I mean, the devil, this is a complicated situation. This is also a very complicated individual is what I'm getting here. So they're telling you things are complicated right now. Take some time to breathe out. You don't need to take on this person's energy. You don't need to take on this person's, you know, karma. You don't have to take on this person's just inability to be able to commit, to communicate, to want to be with you. You don't have to take on that crap. You have the, you have the power at this point, at any point, to just disconnect and not, you know, not stay connected in an unhealthy way anymore. You have the power to do that. I know some of you will say, but I don't know how. And all I can say is that, you know, it just comes down to just doing it or not doing it. We can make all the excuses in the world. We can't do something. I can't do it. I've tried. I can't. Try harder. Coins, abundance. So spirit is also talking about our own abundance. And we have the veil, the future. Do we want an abundant future? Or do we want a future that is dark where we're just waiting around, feeling heartbroken, feeling stuck, feeling addicted and codependent? We can do that if we choose to. Or we can breathe it out and start attracting more abundance in our future. But see, this person's wearing a veil. The future is unknown. You might be saying to yourself, I have no idea if this is ever going to work out. I have no idea if this person's ever going to change. I have no idea if we're ever going to end up together. But guess what? As long as you stay stuck waiting for this person, nothing is going to change. The thing is, why not take a chance and move forward and just kind of do your own thing for a while? Stop worrying so much about this. Stop making this the most important thing in your life. Really concentrate and focus on your own abundance, your own energy, your own situation. And just by being in that energy, you might very well cause this person to energetically shift and want to level up with you. You know, why not? Why not take the chance? Why not take that risk? Why not take a risk that this person actually is not willing to take at this point? Maybe be the leader in the situation and do, you know, be the stronger out of the two of you. And maybe this person will follow lead and maybe they will not. But at least you will be moving forward and you will not be staying stuck in this energy. Staying addicted to this lower vibrational stuff. Because right now, this person is in some darkness. Big time. They got a lot of karma. They have a lot of lessons that they're currently learning right now. And you staying connected and waiting for them and trying to like either help them or figure it out, you're actually just dimming your own light at this point. So you got to let go. You got to be logical. You might want to be very queen of cups, nurture, love, be supportive. But the queen of swords is where it's at for 
you particular people watching this video that are resonating with this message. It's not about being an asshole. It's not about being cold. It's not about kicking somebody when they're down. This is about self perseverance. And that's very important for you and this person right now, because they right now might be drowning and two of you can't go down. One of you has got to stay up above the water so you guys can, you know, somebody can be the survivor in the situation. Two people can't go under at the same time. So anyways, I hope that you guys got something from that reading. I know that it was definitely more of a challenging reading. Um, I don't even really want to say challenging, more of a complicated reading. Very complicated things going on right now for this individual. I don't even really want to say things are complicated for the person watching this video. I'm getting that things can become complicated and even stay complicated as long as you are waiting around for this person. But if you're moving forward with your life and you're just kind of like, you know what, if it's something that works out great, if they can figure it out, that would be wonderful. But I got to take care of me. I got to keep doing me. I'm getting that you're going to be just fine. That there is potential that this person can figure it out. But just in case they don't, do not waste your time waiting around for them to change. You've got to be willing to change your own energy and move forward with your own life if you expect somebody to do the same. you got to be able to be what you want. So if you want this person to change, you've got to be willing to change yourself. And you guys can't both stay stuck in the devil's energy or shit ain't going to go anywhere. You guys are both going to stay stuck. Somebody's got to breathe out this toxic energy. And so if that's going to be you, because this person is really struggling, then let it be so. Because the future right now, it, it's unknown. It's unknown what's going to happen. It is. There's potential. But it's unknown right now. There's a veil. The, the future is veiled. There is abundance is what spirit is saying. But again, it could be self-created abundance. It's an abundance that, you know, spirit, life, the universe wants to give to us. It's our birthright to have abundance in all ways, shapes, or forms. But the thing is, is that if we don't have an abundant mindset and we feel like, you know, we're lost, we're stuck, we're never going to be able to be happy, we're never, we're always going to be miserable, this person's bringing us so much pain, we're stuck, we can't move on, we can't let go, that is not an abundant mindset. So you're going to stay stuck with them. So if you want to attract more abundance in your life, you've got to disconnect and you've got to start concentrating on you and taking better care of yourself. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys next time. Bye.